everyone, today I'm super excited because we're gonna unbox and then test this haiku box. And this is something we heard about while we were doing our podcast with our friend Alex Lamro. He got one, he tried it, and he thought it was really cool. So we reached out to them and they were nice enough to send us one to test out and review for everybody. So basically the idea with this is it's a box you set up in your yard and it records what's going on around and then it sends you notifications and the recordings of the birds that are there. And so it is using bird net technology, bird net. And that's something similar to Merlin. If you know about that, that tries to identify birds by call. So I've heard really cool things about it. In addition to this, there's like a membership for it, which I think you can get like one year with it. Uh, so these are the prices right now. So the Haiku box with the basic membership, which includes a three week trial is $199. And then with an annual membership is $249. And then with a prepaid five year membership is $399. So $399, not just $3.99. Um, but yeah, I like the packaging that sent us a little note uh, that came with it, which I thought was a nice little touch. Um, just saying, you know, thanks for giving it a try and they're looking forward to, uh, you know, hearing what we think of it. So I'm really excited to check it out. The packaging looks really kind of quirky and cute. So let's open it up here. Solid packaging. I would, I would rate this packaging pretty high. It's got a quick start guide. And then this is some more details about it. it sounds like they're partner with like Cornell. Uh, so that the data actually gets used for science too, which is neat. So it's not very heavy. <laughs> it says, welcome to Haiku Box. We're so glad to have you as our newest Haiku again. So this is pretty much it. It looks like you plug it in and you set it up and then it's good to go. So this is our Haiku Box, connects here. And then I'm assuming it can't be too far away because it needs to be powered. There are two apps you need to download for the Haiku Box. The Haiku Box Connect app and the regular app. I connected with the first one, enabled Bluetooth, plugged in the box, and started connecting to Wi-Fi. It's very, it's very light. Hey, we can name it. Let's name it. the BLB box for Badgerland birding. So we'll share our data with the community in the Cornell lab. All right, let's go to the app. So this is taking us to the second app now. So there's two apps you're gonna need. It's got 4.9 ratings, that seems good. So I believe this has the three week trial. So I think we should be able to get you know, the everything for those three weeks. Um, let's see. So let's get new bird alerts. So it'll send us notifications. If it becomes, if it becomes too much, we can always turn it off. I think the website, like the app looks nice. And this in the middle, I think is the sensitivity. So you can set it low, medium, high. Volume you can change. There's a calendar you can go through and look at. Okay, so we have that set up. Choose a spot outside where there's an outlet and a strong Wi-Fi. Outlet should be protected from rain, tie up loose cords. Hang or place it upright and keep out of rising water or puddles. Try to avoid noisy locations. Other languages, there's a warranty, one year limited warranty. Okay, I think it's kind of interesting that it looks like it has a place to kind of screw it in, but it doesn't come with screws. It'd be kind of nice if it did, you could put it on like a board or something and just place it. But I guess we could get our own and do it. Um, otherwise it said hang it, which is kind of interesting. So I think we'll set this up just kind of right outside in the back. I know there's a great horned owl that lives around here. So maybe we should just set it up now. All right, let's take a look at our setup. It was pretty easy. I just have an extension and then I just put a nail into the deck here. There it is, and the cord runs here to the outlet. As you can hear, it's uh, there's an ambulance out there, so it's not necessarily ideal. This isn't what I would call a permanent setup. It's kind of a temporary setup, so we can test it, see how it works. 
We had the haiku box out overnight. It's the following morning. So it appears we hit the home. It says loading 345. So I think that's how many recordings it's taken. First thing I noticed was common grackle at like three something in the morning. Um, I did get a couple notifications. So let's see if we kind of agree with these. The top couple are all things that have been in the yard. So European Starling, House Sparrow, Goldfinch, Grackle, Junko, House Finch. So let's listen to some of these as well. So you can play the recording. House Finch. Checks out. Cardinal. So I can say it is correct. Crow. Let's see what Enhance does. Oh, it kind of tries to reduce background noise, but it sounds kind of uh, electronic then. Ring build gull. So this is interesting. Let's see. That's pretty cool. I've never had a ring build gull for the yard. I'm assuming that I just flew over, but that's neat because that's something I wouldn't have known was here. Um, sweet. Chickadee Robin, purple finch. I feel like that's just house finch. Osprey. I don't think I heard an Osprey. No, I don't. I don't think that was an Osprey. This is pretty cool so far. It's neat to see what it's picking up that we wouldn't know since we're inside and that if it picks up something you're especially interested in you can you know go out and keep an eye out for whatever bird that is is there a place where i can just see every single thing oh, okay so it has the species and then you can hit like when it was seen gotcha neat so let's keep it out see what else picks up i've had that haiku box out for a couple days now and it's been pretty neat to see what it's picked up uh, yesterday we had 32 species, 3,764 calls and songs detected. Our most frequent visitor was the house sparrow, which unfortunately checks out for the backyard. Uh, but I do feel like it is, uh, mis-IDing quite a few things more than I probably thought. Carolina run, I think it thinks the cardinals are sometimes Carolina runs. Like that's definitely a cardinal. And you could actually say you know, Caroline is not correct, it's this, and help it kind of determine that. Um, a couple other things, it kept saying there were Ospreys and they didn't sound like Ospreys. Flicker was neat that it picked up because I don't really see flickers in the yard, but it's definitely a flicker. That's cool. Gray Capperd, I don't think was actually a Gray Capperd. Um, pine Siskin, uh, none of the recordings have really sounded like Pine Siskins. Crow is neat, because I don't really see crows in the yard, but it picked it up clearly. My favorite ones are when it's just like, yep, that's definitely that, and then there actually was a crow in the yard. It said Kestrel. Like, I don't hear a Kestrel on the recording. Uh, and then also, when you go to the map, you can see the other haiku boxes, and you can look at what species they've seen. And I didn't really necessarily like that ours was on there, but you can change it so it's not shown in there. Cause it is, you know, a bit of a privacy thing, but you can look at different ones in different regions and what they're named. So let's go to our settings. So we can say make private, hide it from the map. I'm gonna take off the share data with Cornell because I'm gonna be testing these calls that aren't real. Um, and we'll see, see if it is picking those up. So let's go outside and we can test that and see if it's picking up these calls. I tried playing three different vocalizations for the haiku box. The sandhill crane, the red-winged blackbird, and the belted kingfisher. Overall, it did pick up the red-winged blackbird and the belted kingfisher, but not the sandhill crane. Oh, I got the kingfisher. So that's interesting. I'll see if I can go in and delete these because <laughs> I don't really want them on the box, but it's interesting to kind of just test it and see 
And then we did make sure we're not sharing our data with Cornell right now because I don't want it to get all this weird stuff. Um, but it is, you can look at the maps of where, well, you can look at the spectrogram, you can look at the maps of like where the sightings have been. And then there's different like calls per hour, frequency things. Um, you know, you could see what hour it was. So pretty cool stuff. So we've had the Haiku box out for a couple days now. It's been pretty cool to see what it is detecting or thinking that it's detecting. So yesterday we had 29 species that it thought it heard, 4,372 calls and songs with the American Robin being our most frequent visitor. So with the sensitivity or with the uh, confidence levels, it is gonna detect everything within low, medium, or high confidence, this is just filtering it. So it'll have all those available. It's not like you set it and it will only do things at that sensitivity. So low is definitely, you get a lot of stuff that's questionable. Um, high, I've still gotten some things that's questionable. And it's a little frustrating to me because I thought that this technology would be a little further along or would be better able to detect what each call and song is. Because I know it uses BirdNet, but I feel like Merlin is more reliable as far as IDing certain things because we're definitely getting consistent false reports. But it has gotten some really cool things too that I wouldn't have known were in the yard and are definitely correct uh, based on the sound recordings. So let's kind of go through what's correct and what's incorrect. So we have our American Robin. They're all over the yard. So that one is definitely here. American Robin checks out. American Goldfinch, all over the yard. Common Grackle, makes sense. Northern Cardinal, also all over the yard. Yep, Red-Bellied Woodpecker, it misdetects a lot. I'm sure they're out there, but sometimes it'll think the uh, Robin making noise is the Red-Bellied Woodpecker. So this one sounds like Red-Bellied itself, but let's go to one from like earlier today. That one is correct as well. So let's go to one. Oh, maybe. It's... Yeah, so that sounds like it's picking up the robin. Um, so that's kind of weird. Uh, morning dove in the yard, house bear all over the yard, house finch, junco, gray catbird, not in the yard right now. So it sounds like it's just picking up the finch vocalizations, which is odd. Uh, chickadee in the yard. Song Sparrow could be in the yard, but I feel like what it picks up is probably not Song Sparrow. White Wing Crossbill. Like, I get where it's coming from, but a lot of this stuff is just not here. Like, Purple Martin, not here. So, let's change the confidence level to high. Even with high, some of the stuff it was mistaking I thought was weird. Carolina Rennet thinks it picks up all the time. But, uh, yeah, we don't, we don't have Carolina runs in the yard. Um, so I find, I just find that weird. I thought it would be a little more able to pick out what's in the yard. Let's look yesterday because we got some cool visitors that I did not know were in the yard. So it, it picked up Sandhill Crane, which is weird because it didn't pick it up when I was blasting the call recording next to it but it actually got one yesterday, which is legit. So that's pretty awesome. Common red pole, not in the yard. Siskins, not in the yard. Flickers, I don't see, but it's picked up and it's correct. So that's been a cool one to be like, yeah, Northern Flickers in the yard. Uh, Purple Finch wasn't. Tufted Titmouse is one that came out super clear. So obviously they were there. I've never seen it. So this was a cool breakthrough to be like, we have Tufted Titmice that come in the yard sometimes. Cause that's definitely the tufted titmouse uh, vocalization. Cedar waxwing we've had like Northern Mockingbird, not in the yard. Um, least flycatcher, not in the yard. Canada goose. I didn't hear any Canada geese on that, but it did pick some up that was correct. So swamp sparrow. I think a lot of the times trills confuse it. Like it was picking up pine warbler. I think it was the uh, Junko trill. So it's really cool, but I almost feel like you need some sort of expert level or you know advanced call and song knowledge to kind of pick through what's what. And I'm curious about what data is getting sent to Cornell and if they're sifting through it or they're just kind of accepting all of it. 
or how exactly that works. But it's, uh, it's really tough for me to kind of review because I think it's really cool and I really like the idea of it. I just wish the IDs were a little more um, consistently reliable where you could see it having something and that knew for sure was it. I feel like a lot of times I have to pick through and be like, is this really it? But you do get the breakthrough things like the tip mouse where it's like, hey, there was a tip mouse in the yard for sure. Uh, so it's a cool product. I hope that they kind of get the ID uh, stuff narrowed down a little bit more. I like that they provide the recording of it so you can kind of judge yourself, but I do almost feel like you need some kind of uh, knowledge about these songs and calls when you're using it so it's not just someone thinking all this stuff and this is in the yard. Because I, if I had no knowledge of bird calls, I would just be like, wow, we got Purple Martins and we got Palm Warblers and all this stuff uh, that's not really there. And it's great to pair it with what you're seeing in the yard as well. So definitely don't just go by that, but it's a really cool thing to check out and try. I hope that ID stuff gets uh, figured out a little bit more solid in the future, but it was really neat to test out. We're gonna keep it in the yard and I hope uh, spring migration is crazy with a lot of the warblers and stuff passing through. I'm excited to see uh, what it picks up. Another one that I thought was odd is I could hear a great horned owl calling at night and the box didn't pick it up at all. So some weird quirky things that I think I hope get ironed out in the future, uh, but it's definitely fun to test out. And thanks so much to Haiku Box for sending it over. If you have one of these, let us know what you think of it in the comments below. And if you are interested in one, we'll have a link in the description as well to check out. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Mm -hmm.